Those are 19 magic seconds right there. The all <laughs> that little intro. <laughs> All right. Howdy, folks, and welcome to the It's All Connected show with Circle and myself, Grimner. And we are live right here, right now, on RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz and other places. But that, that's the important ones right there. So, And, and uh, I must correct you, Grimner. Okay. It's all connected with uh, Grimner and Cirque. Oh, uh, Whatever. <laughs> in through the outdoor all right um <laughs> wait a minute don't take that wrong oh, <laughs> oh yeah. so how you doing sir oh i'm doing good uh because they keep saying that no more sunshine it's going to be autumn and winter here and it's doomy and gloomy and then every day we get a couple of hours of sunshine so i'm good i don't expect it i get it so i'm good all right, well, let me just and mention, you? before we go on, this is episode nine here on uh, September 14th, 2020, and this show will be called, uh, Freedom's Just Another Word for dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I, I too, um, I enjoy this time of year, because I have no AC on, I have no heat on, it's just... Normal, whatever the, the thing is, because it's not 100 degrees, and it's not 30 degrees, uh, nope. which, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, which for for you would be, you know, zero or 25 or something like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I use um, measurements that make sense. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> the United States is, is... Weird, yeah. Yeah, reluctant, backwards, whatever. Um, they 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 don't want to get into it. No. So anyway, uh, hi and howdy and welcome to all the folks there in the chat and wherever else you may be listening from. Good to have you here with us, as always. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was thinking about this and, and uh, people out there in the chat listening or, or later on listening on the podcast, whatever. Um, this duck hunt stuff and this fishing thing. Is it is it getting kind of old? Are you ready to be done with it? Or it's fine, you like it, just keep it going. Um, Have you ever seen how many ducks or fish I have participated in? Zero. Yes. I know. No, I know. But I'm just wondering for other folks. Um, you know, I, I could easily eliminate those. <laughs> mm. Or the not. only thing is, though, they are keeping sock puppet's name alive. Well, sock puppet's name will be alive anyway. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, uh, we would not have Vanna White or Weather Dork. Well, I'd probably have Weather Dork um, w w without sock puppet. He's the one yeah. that suggested me to use that that cloud bot. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyway. at some point, um, I was thinking we we uh, we get a couple of. Um, Gazoos, right? The ones you blow in that go. Yeah, right? yeah. And we do a salute for Sock Puppet. Can I do it on a harmonica? Sure. Okay. I can. Flash got a couple of those. Hey, next week we do a ceremonial salute for Sock Puppet. You up to that, Grimner? Sure, sure. Why not? And Sock Puppet, if you're out there and you want to spare the people for that torture, you better lock on RLM. <laughs> you got a week now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there about the, you know, the hunting and fishing. The fishies and, and the ducks. Yeah, you know, whatever. It, it, it's it's yeah. no big deal. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, I, I just... Well, uh, when Sock introduced those, right? Yeah. I remember just before he introduced them, uh, he was bragging on how they were this social experiment so he could collect data on how people would uh, behave on RLM. And uh, that's why I never participated because that really, I just got a nope. I ain't doing it. 
Mm-hmm. No matter how ridiculous it is, I just went, nope. All right. Well, I, whatever. Connect I, I, this. I, I, I don't know what it what it would uh, what the social experiment uh, result or outcome should no. be. Um, I know that there are lots of people out there that befriend the ducks or whatever. Um, and, and 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 if you uh, uh, look at my 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 thing on either the ducks and or the fish, mm. I have a hundred percent kills and no saves no friends on ducks and fishes <laughs> is it because ducks and fish are not worthy of your friendship Grimia? no they're food or are they food, <laughs> they're food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't i don't make friends with my food <laughs> no do you eat a lot of duck and fish Probably not, right? No, I don't. I mean, if I lived near if I lived near water, I'd probably eat more fish than I could fish out of the water myself. But uh, yeah, the fish at the at the market here is not real good. Um, no. Yeah, no, no, no pet cows, no pet pigs, <laughs> no pet chickens, <laughs> no pet so, ducks. Anyway. <laughs> And duck, I eat duck on, on Christmas. That's it. It's a, for me. That's a completely that's a Christmas thing. That's what you eat for Christmas Eve, and I wouldn't eat it any other day. Well, wouldn't Christmas be goose? No, we eat duck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Filled with apples and prunes. Prunes. Yep. Boy, I must be a busy bathroom the next day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing with all the other fat you're going to eat on Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Grimnir, how free do you feel? I feel... Are we going to do like a freedom index? Yeah. Oh, freedom index. I, don't, I wouldn't even know how to begin. Uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> this, this, this program, as I mentioned at the top, is called... <laughs> Freedom is just another word for a dot, dot, dot. Uh, and and um, Circle had asked uh, me earlier uh, in the chat prior to the show, uh, or or suggested, not asked, uh, as a topic, something left to lose, freedom. And and so I, I, at that point, told her that I disagreed with Chris Christopherson's words there, because in the song... Me and Bobby McGee. Uh, he says, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. Well, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go with that because I can be free and still have lots of stuff to lose. I, 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 I don't, I don't see how having a total lack of anything you value is freedom. Do you, do you, do you see that? Yeah, actually, I do. I mean, I, I understand. And I'm that, feeling it a lot right now, right? Oh uh, well, I I understand how like, uh, you know, your your street people out there, they got nothing, and 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 they're totally free. So I get that, I get that. But well, um, maybe they have something to lose. Maybe not something physical, but maybe they do have something to lose. Well, sure, they could. They could have a dog or a. a or their mental, or their sanity, their sanity, or their, or their honor, health, their health, whatever. or their pride, or their health. Yeah. R- right. No. <laughs> Moose, Moose, Girl, Moose Girl puts the whole, uh, the whole line in there. Uh, yes. Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. Nothing. That is all that Bobby left me, and being free was easy when he sang the blues. Just me and my Bobby McGee. Yo, know, I know this song is about a broken up relationship, but um, uh, in a general sense, uh, that freedom being another word for nothing left to lose. I, I, I mean, I have, I, I feel free. You asked how fi- free I felt. Yeah. I feel, I feel very free. I mean, nobody bothers me. I just do my stuff, live my life, and I got a lot of crap. Um, yeah. Some of it's good stuff. But I, I I clump it all into the crap group because I don't really need any of it. Um, but I like it and I and I still feel free. Yeah. And but uh, okay, so let let me say okay, seven years ago, right? Uh huh. 
I was a lot freer, or <laughs> sort of, right? Well, prior that's the whole. Prior, that's the pivot point. Seven years ago, I was a lot freer than my, than I am today. Prior to meeting Flash. Yes, seven years ago, I was just me. I was living in a rental apartment. I could walk away from everything. I had no ties or nothing. I could walk away from everything from one day to the other. Okay. And and then I met my husband. That you see that that binded me to something. Now I have something worth losing. So now I have something worth um, that I want to keep. Sure. So all of a sudden, I couldn't walk away from my job, or and then we got a house. Then we we moved up here. We got a house. It's another thing. Now I I really can't just walk away from it. Well, the house is sort of cheap, so I could walk away from my job, but I didn't want. I don't want to. Okay. And well, then no, we got, I really then, don't then want to. Then with the house came a cat. And the cat can't move because the cat is in this house. So even if I wanted to get another house, I'm at least tied to this house as long as there is a cat. And then on top of that, we got a dog. Well, yeah, but 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 these are all choices that you made. Yeah. So it is it is still, you are still, even though yeah. you have these things. Oh, I was not forced to surrender my freedom. I gave it up voluntarily. But have you actually given up freedom, or you? You've just uh, adopted a new way of handling your freedom. Um, I would say, and I'm, and that's, um, and I mean that with as a very loving thing and a very good thing. I would say I lost, and no, I didn't lose. I gave up. I surrendered a lot of my freedom. Or you gained a new type of freedom. Yeah, I gained something else. Because, because but I that's mean, because. You, you, yeah, well, freedom is not the most important thing to me. It used to be anymore. That, it used to be that you were in an apartment, and you had to pay rent to some guy or person or group of people, whatever. I don't know who ran your apartments, but um, <laughs> but uh, it, a it, Dutch investment firm. Yeah. Okay, but it was up to their discretion if if they wanted to boot you at any point in time. Now, because I wasn't, I wasn't invested in it. Right, and now back now, then, before I met, before I met Flash, back then, freedom was my most important part. That's why I didn't have, I hadn't bought an apartment. I rented one. I hadn't. I mean, that's that's that is what was the most important thing to me was not being bound down to anything. But but now your freedom has shifted, and it and being bound to things like Flash and your house and your cat and your dog. Is is a different kind of freedom, but it's still freedom. You still you've made those choices, and you like them. Yeah, well, I'm. I, yeah, we can say. See, and that's what freedom is—a fun word, though, right? Because I volu- in my in my opinion, I vo- well, how I experienced it, or still is, is I voluntarily give up my freedom for something that's more important to me now. Okay, I, I but I see it. I see it that. I know. You you have a new type of freedom, you don't yes. you don't you don't I mean uh, before I don't, I don't know what your personal outlook was there but maybe you were out there looking for a man to hook up with no uh, well I like I said I don't know but a lot of a lot of people do you know they're out there looking for a mate yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever kind of mate uh, and and so they're you know trapped in that idea that oh I need to have a mate I need to have a mate and and so they they uh, they're they're bound by that, even though they're not bound by another human. And so you have that, and now with you and him together, it's a different kind of freedom. But I think it's still freedom. And and same yeah. go, same goes with your 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 pets, your animals, and uh, you know pretty much everything else you do, even even your job. Um, you like it. I like my job. Yeah, yeah you like, like it. it, and so you do it, and it's. It's not like something you get up grumbling every morning. Yeah, damn it, I gotta do this work. No, 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 no. My my enslavement is a very pleasant one, and it's voluntarily one hundred. Or as you know, because then you come back to control, right? Yeah, but okay. That freedom is also tied up to control. Okay, okay. if if it's voluntary, yeah, is it still enslavement? Well, we jokingly say that around this house, sure. because I think we were t- we were both two people who were very defined by our um, um, not having anything of importance kind of freedom, right? Which isn't a very positive kind of freedom, though. Yeah, it's, it's a, that's a desperate kind of a 
um, freedom, right? But for, for us, it, that was pretty much one of the things we had in common. And we both said, okay, well, I'm going to tie myself down to this because it feels good. Okay. Well, and, you know, the only thing that I, I question at all about your, your relationship now, uh, after all these years with Flash, mm-hmm. was, was going through the state to do a contract uh, in order for you two to be joined in the eyes of the state. Okay, let me, okay, see, and then we're back to feeling free and the freedom of your mind and what you, what kind of ceremonies and how you go throughout your life in the restrictions there is, right? Right. Because what we did, he, he, this is our, our wedding, uh, and we had fun all the way through it. Um, it's true. We had one moment of 10 minutes where we were at the, um, the city hall of Copenhagen, which is a, actually a very pretty building and it's a very pretty, uh, reception. You come into this old, old castle in the middle of Copenhagen. And uh, we signed those horrible documents. We did. And it was horrible. And I could see that flash was like, Ugh. I would right? imagine. <laughs> and it took like 10 minutes and the lady who helped us was pretty nice and borrowed us a pen and all that and then we were go okay we have to go through the whole ceremony of in front of a preach priest or witness because we didn't go through a priest in a church but we had an official and some witnesses we had to go through that one right so i told okay we want the least amount of work to do that how do and she said well there is this eurovision song contest in copenhagen right now because uh and that was a big thing in copenhagen that summer right and um and because of that uh, we have these uh, drive-by weddings <laughs> uh, because a lot, and she was, she was, because she was like this old, uh, very proper Danish woman, right? And she told me because all those homosexual people, they like to get married in drama and woo-ha like that. So they made this drive-by for a week kind of wedding thing out in the middle of the harbor in Copenhagen, in the newly built opera house on the on the harbor of Copenhagen. Really pretty glass building, you know. And you're in the, one of the most pretty places of Denmark. And um, and I said, okay, let's do that. Then I, I we don't have to go through any booking. We don't have to do any arrangements. We just meet out there. It's a 10-minute thing. Uh, my family can come. We had Mary on Skype. We do that. And all, I pretty much just send a text message to my mom and my sister saying, I'm getting married and some friends. I'm getting married this and this day. Uh, it will be at the opera at this, at this time. If you got the time and you're not doing anything else, come join us, right? right? And that was the wedding. That was all the planning and all the investment into the wedding. So after we signed up for that, we walked out of that uh, city hall and we kind of looked at each other and we went, uh, that was state, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, you signed shit, yeah. Uh. And we agreed, well, okay, let's go do our thing now. So we went and we found a tattoo artist, um, really cool guy from Slovakia or something, and uh, this newly tattoo right where I lived, um, very local, and uh, I signed, I put my name on a piece of paper, and Lou put uh, his name on a piece of paper, and the guy tattooed my Lou's name on my wrist, and my name on Lou's wrist, right? Okay. The same day we did, the, we went directly from the state, uh, but fun lady who helped us with the gay wedding thing, right? Um and then out to these to two artists. And then two weeks after that, we did this really hey. fun ceremony full of gay people out in this big, over-the-top weirdo, no priests, no nothing. They even did the ceremony in English so Luke could keep up. And so, 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 and te- it took so 10 te- minutes, and we had fun. So, so technically, you and Flash are gay married. Something like, I think we were like one or two straight couples getting married that day. <laughs> <laughs> and they had like, they had these big, these uh, lounge bands and red carpets and little loungey things and bands playing a uh, wedding musak and uh, it was really cheesy and fun. And a lot of uh, lesbian and, and gay couples getting married in big dresses and way out of the top, right? And yeah. my family was all there. Some friends came. It took like 10 minutes. We had fun. Mary was on Skype. Uh, my nephew dropped the phone and had to crawl under the official ladies. She wore like a big cape rope thingy <laughs> and he had to crawl under her rope to get my phone so mary could so we could film it and mary could be there right yeah and it was fun then we went outside and we stood by the harbor we smoked a spliff and we drank some champagne with my family and my friends and um 
big salute came because it was accidentally or randomly the same day as the uh, royal ship leaves the harbor for its summer travels. So they do the nine king salute with cannons, and they did that just as we got married. And then we went to a bar, a uh, old uh, billiard pool thing, and had pizza, and then we went to Freetown and had a big cake in the middle of the summer, smoking spliffs, and then we went home, and my whole family got a tourist tour guide of Freetown, because some of my aunts had never been there. So that well, was it. And, well, I and, uh, well, it sounds like it was a lot of fun, good day. It was fun. Uh, all that, except for that, except yeah. for that involved in the state thing. Yeah. And And you had a purpose. Behind involving the state, right? I I had well, it comes down to the ownership thing, because you are not granted anything state-wise just because you're married. And even in America, and not in Denmark too. Uh, uh, but to me, it's like a very official way of saying I own this, and this goes with me now. And when it comes to lawmaking, when you go into law, it creates a third uh, entity, right? You create a third straw man when you get married. Yeah, yeah, you're, 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 you're okay. The agreement, the the love, the contract yeah. is between. And you, then the straw man, yeah. But between you and Flash, and then yeah, and I then know. this third party has to come in and say, okay, you're because we say so. You two, you two love each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is so but bizarre. see, I also see it as you know, it, it, it's also like, well, okay, we created a third straw man, though, right? Yes. So that then then something becomes very real or not real. <laughs> that depends, right? Yeah. But it becomes very official, at least. Well, it's legally binding at that point. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, that's I mean, that's how the whole contract thing works. So. But what's most binding? I got his name on my wrist. Yeah, and I know today it, that doesn't mean anything because you can all get it away. But uh, or you, you could can just, just change it if it says, laser it away. If, if it says Lou, you could change that to something yeah, else. Yeah, but in it. the old days, Grimnir, right? In the good old days, a tattoo was a tattoo, and you stood by it. You had no way to get out. Absolutely, of it, right? absolutely. Yeah, and that's why yeah. I've, not, I've never had a tattoo. I don't. I can't imagine a word or symbol or artwork that I want. To wear around on my body. <laughs> I, just, really? I, just, I just never came. I mean, I've thought about it, you know, like all, all these people, you know, had tattoos, da, da, da. But to me, it was like, I'm going to put like, no, no, nah, it just, it just a, I, it, it, maybe something, no, I don't know. Thor's hammer. Yeah. Thor's hammer would have been cool, I guess, but, uh, yeah. 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 Or, I don't know. It's to me that's like pla tattoos, getting married, all sorts like that. That's like planting a flag, though, right? Well, flag. Like saying, you, I took this. You can pull this it. You, you, if you once you plant the flag, you can just pull it right back out. No, 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 man. Oh. Once you tame a fox, you're always responsible for the fox, Grimnir. Are you? That's the whole thing. Then you're back to the freedom thing. Yes, if you tame a fox and it becomes your friend. Then you are forever responsible for what happens to that fox. So once you've domesticated some, thing. once you befriended another living being, you are always responsible. For Flash, are you feeling domesticated? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> am I not always? I, I mean, I befriended you. You did. Yeah. But you're not responsible for me. Uh, in some way, I think I am. Okay. I think I have a responsibility in your happiness because I'm your friend. All right. Yeah. Okay. I would good. Say so. uh, and I mean, I don't necessarily feel that responsibility uh, back to you, but if um, you know, that's okay. I I enjoy your company and I enjoy uh, talking with you. Yeah. She could be mean. I know. Um, but you know, that, that's the nature. But of I humans. go back to okay. Uh, there is a beautiful book written called um, "The Little Prince." It's a really short book from a, a French author. It's a really pretty book, but it goes back to the whole belonging versus freedom and all that, right? Right. And it's about a little prince who has his own little planet that's out in space. He has his little planet. He's happy. Everything is great. Him and his sheep, happy. 
One day, a seed <laughs> lands on his planet, right? And it turns into a pretty rose. Okay. And all of a sudden, he cares so much about this rose that he can't sleep. He can't do anything. He's worried about how am I going to take care of a rose? What if something happened? What if it loses its one flower? What if the sheep eats my rose? All this, right? Okay. What if? And then all of a sudden, he had to remove all these weeds because the rose couldn't grow with the weeds. And, well, then he sort of goes, okay, i got to get away from this. So he leaves his planet. And he jumps around in space and he meets all these other planets before he ends up on Earth. And it's a really pretty book. But uh, the fox is the first thing he meets. It's a fox. And the fox says to him, will you please tame me? And the prince says, I don't know what that means. And the fox says, well... To you, I am a million, I'm just one of a million foxes, and every foxes are the same. But if you tame me, then I will be a special fox to you, and to me I will be special. Like you are just one boy between a million of boys to me, but if you tame me and we become friends, then you will be special in my world, right? Okay. So they, he tamed him and he became friends. But, and then when he has to leave the planet and a lot of shit happens, then he, he says, but I tamed a fox. I'm forever responsible for what I tamed. But but he just ab- he, he, he just abandoned all of his, his animals at the planet that he left. Well, he's going to get back to the planet because what he wanted to find <laughs> was a way to have the sheep so it could eat the weed, so the flower could uh, be pretty and beautiful, but without having to worry how the fox would not eat the flower. And he met a pilot who drew him a box for the sheep so he could take that back to his planet. But to get back to his planet, he had to let go of because there was no way of traveling there. So he, you know. Found a snake. That, it's a long story. <laughs> 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 but the really, the thing is, right, uh, that comes back to that whole thing about being free. And all of a sudden, you get something that's precious to you. Right. And then that controls and, ru- and runs your so life. So in, 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 in that line of thinking, mm. um, if you are responsible for something, anything, yeah. Um, then you're no longer free. Yeah, I would say that. Okay, so you, so you, you don't think that being being uh, being <coughs> responsible could be connected still with freedom? Um. Well, um. No, I don't. I don't think so. No. Okay. I think, but I think it can, there is a choice though, and because freedom today, I'm sure if we define freedom, it's going to be something about not being controlled, being able to do what you want, uh, not being um, coerced, not being uh, corrupted, and, uh, and not being threatened, right? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I have a lot of crap, whatever you want to call it. My car, my house, uh, all the stuff that's in it, uh, my relationships with all the people that I know. Um, yeah. uh, but I don't, I don't feel encumbered by any of that. I feel more free because of yeah. the things that I have versus having to always be needing these things and always mm-hmm. be... Uh, searching them out in order in order to okay, but then that's okay. Then then look at the mask thing, right? Go back to the mask because that's where I feel it right now, and okay. I'm sure you do too. Yeah, absolutely. That um, I wear the mask when I'm fucking told to, and I do it because I sat down and I looked what what are the consequences of not doing it, right? Mm-hmm. And the consequences of that uh, would be that I would have to get a car. <laughs> Oh, because your public transportation system requires masks. Yeah. Okay. So I would either have to get a car or I would have to quit my job and say, okay, then I can't have my job. Or you just have to say to hell with it, I'm not wearing one and see what happens. But then I would just be kicked off the train, get a fine, being told to get off. Really? They would would do that? Yeah. They would do that. That's what they do. do I mean, because around here, around here... um, you know they 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 have uh, signs. Of course, there's the governor's mandate that everybody wear one. And if you don't wear one, then they're going to go after the businesses that you go into not wearing one. But again, also they have one at at the post office. They have the sign, but almost nobody pays attention to those signs. 
Um, people just walk in and out uh, of these places and walk around and do their business as usual without the well, sign. The only, the only place here where you have to, where people wear a mask and where you have to, is on the trains. But okay, so but like if you walk into a bar, you're okay. Yeah, there are no masks on bar. Okay. It's so only on the train. So what makes the train special? Um, well, it, well, it's because they've been um, adding extra trains to make people distance, right? So because in the rush hour, uh, a lot of people are on the same trains. Okay. And to do that, you had to get a. Uh, a ticket with a seat on it from most trains, not the train I go on, but the longer or bigger trains. And the other ones, they had to put in a lot of extra trains and a lot of extra personnel and all that to, to do that, um, to spread out the, the people so people wouldn't be close. And that's how they did it. But that's that's just expensive as fuck. And for something... So they can't keep paying for that. So they they downscaled the, the trains, and then to to mitigate that, they said, well, then you wear um, masks on trains. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it. Of course, we know it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. And, and and masks not only don't work, but they actually cause no. harm. Um, uh, no, the official uh, uh, attitude or opinion about this from the doctors of Denmark, right? The official, that is that this is a political move. It's got nothing to do with health concerns. It's purely political motivated. Right, and which is where what it is everywhere because, and that now. Because and, the others do it. And, and, <laughs> because the others are doing it. <laughs> we don't want to be the ones who aren't. Uh, yeah, well, you do actually, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. look at Sweden, man! How much hate they're getting and attention oh, and, and pressure, man! But no, that's not the, that's what they didn't want in Denmark, so they're just doing it. And but, but yeah, and and it's worked. Um, yeah. So uh, that that's the horrible thing is they they are pointing out the uh, the lies and the hypocrisy of everybody else. Yeah. Um, so and, and and I knew I knew right in the very beginning. Um, when they when they started doing the lockdowns pre mask stages, um, that once they do it, there's really no way out because you can't say that they can't say that all of these lockdowns were not only extremely pointless as far as slowing the curve or stopping the spread or whatever, but but also. In destroying all your businesses, they can't come back now and say, "Well, we did all this, and now we know that it was it was a bad thing to do." They're never going to come out and admit. That they're it was saying a bad... that in Denmark. That's exactly what they're saying in Denmark, Grimnir. The, the government. We didn't want to take a chance. We were in front of something. We didn't know what was. We reacted, and we see now that it might have been an overreaction, but we stand by it so we could save people, and health is more important. But it's not and they're anything. using the masks here to say the mask is there so that we don't have to lock down again. We don't want to lock down, so they're we're not locked down. So, so they they are saying uh, that that the masks work. That's what they're saying. They're saying no, th no. They're saying well, this you is said so that you don't and have hand sanitizer and hand washing works. <laughs> that they know works. Masks they have they don't know, but it will. It seems to be taking a little of the spreading too, which they have no clue about because they don't know what the natural <laughs> amount of spreading yeah. would be, no. um, yeah. uh, except for the fact if they look back uh, through through all the, the flu epidemics that have been through or just regular yeah. flu epidemic or not, um, they would realize that uh, the, the flu was spreading less than this stuff w without all these ignorant, I don't even want to call them precautions, but uh, whatever you want to call them, uh, actions that they're forcing people to do. Um, well, the official stand from uh, the health um, in Denmark and, and is and that's if you take the official is that uh, we do know distancing works we know hand washing works um, we don't know what, what whether or not the masks do so the masks are an add on it's very important people keep distancing and washing their hands that is what we know works the other thing is what we experiment with 
And if we can do this and avoid the lockdowns again, this is what we're aiming for, to avoid the lockdowns. Again. So your lockdowns are all lifted? Um, uh, you can, they just, we were, we were down to, you could be a hundred people together and they just in some of the bigger cities said now it's only 50 people, but pretty much bars are open, stores are there, not a lot, no. Okay. So they're they still, they're, they're closed they're still, or... they, they, they still have the lockdown, but at varying degrees. Yeah, they they went into they call it phases, right? Opening phases. When they went to full lockdown, then they had opening phase one, where the schools and the kindergartens and things like that opened. Um, then they had phase two, where all the stores and hairdressers and all that opened. Then they had phase three, where all the bars and and sports and all that opened, but not the the concerts. But that was in phase four. The phase four was the complete opening right we made it to phase three and then we got stuck in phase three and now they rolled a little back into phase two but only about how many people you can be together <laughs> which is <laughs> which is kind of hilarious too those numbers okay 100 yeah. 100 people here in this group that's fine 101 yeah. oh no 101 yeah. that <laughs> yeah. And they're seeing, and, and, and right now the cops are reporting pirate parties everywhere. <laughs> pirate parties. Yeah, people who do underground parties. Arr. They're like, fuck it, I'm going to be partying. And, you know, you know one, one of the funniest things, and, and I, like, I guess not one of the funniest, but something I found funny. Uh, I saw it somewhere. I might have been on Twitter or I don't know. Um, one state, and I forget which state it was, but they said, okay, well, you can now have uh, this type of business open. At eighteen <laughs> percent, <laughs> it was just like where the where the hell did you come up with that number? Eighteen yeah. <laughs> percent. Well, d dial it down seventeen and a half percent. How about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nineteen point <laughs> two. Nineteen point two. Oh my ridiculous. god! I don't know what kind of big numbers they use over, but here they're mainly tracking the infection rate. Which is stupid because they, That's what they're because you know all these people they got no symptoms of anything, and they say you're infected. It was a test that this that's not even accurate, and they admit the tests are not accurate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but see, but it comes back to the freedom, right? Yeah. And I agree. Musco says freedom exists in my. Yeah, I agree with that. Sure. I agree that there is there is, but I'm not sure. What, see, freedom is such a big word, right? But there is the freedom of cognition, right, of the freedom of being conscious about whatever happens to you. Right. And seeing through things, right? And and freedom definitely starts in your mind. As as right. does the opposite. Yes. You, you, can, you can entrap yourself and uh, take your own freedom away just, just by yes. your own brainwaves. <laughs> but I would say I would say that the reason why you would wear a mask to go to the post office is um is because there is something that you don't want to lose. Well, I've only like, I've only ever worn freedom or I've only I've only ever worn a mask to the post office one time. And, and you did that just to snark, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a Corona Corona headband. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. But I have, but I have worn it. I have worn it in the grocery store once, um, and I did that not for me, but for the grocery store, yes. because I did not want them to incur a fine, which they could have incurred over me walking around in there without a mask, because I like those people, and mm. I, I didn't want them to, to have to pay for for my inaction. Uh, to to the governor's demands um, that 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 she would find them uh, find them I forget what it is like five thousand bucks a day or some kind of crazy amount if they if they didn't force people to wear masks in there so and how uh, can it be their problem right how can uh, right how can it be how can it they be have no problem? yeah you know uh, yeah if you if you have no mandate to act on it. Because they can't, they can't go down to somebody and say, "You have to put on this mask." Right. They just put the sign on the door, 
and 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 um and How and, can you and, be responsible? and I, I, I always I always I always kind of gauge prior to going into a place how it's how it's yeah. going in there. If there's some people that aren't wearing masks, then I won't wear one. But if yeah. everybody's wearing one, and 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 the business could be in trouble because I went in there without one, then I'm going to put one on. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, but, I, but see, I I I a, I do it on the train, because because one thing I really don't I don't want some and I'm going to say woman, uh, nagging at me on the train. Yeah, no Karens allowed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like my one of my biggest fears is some woman started nagging at me on the train. You gotta wear the mask. You you're trying to kill Grandma. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. No. And when I was younger, right? Because I used to spawn a mo. I had a big, beautiful mohawk at one point, right? Uh-huh. All you know, completely um, postal box red. You know, um, I had piercings. I wore leather, fucked up, weird shit, and I looked like a mess to be honest, right? And I used to love the, the negative attention. I was like, bring you're, it on. You're, you're like Susie and the Banshee. <laughs> yeah, because I would take the bus with all these old people and, and normal looking people and everybody would have an opinion. I would used to find it hilarious. Sure. And the shit people will tell you when you look that different is like, wow, lady, you have no manners, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, wait, you wait. just walk up to a stranger and say that because <laughs> people would be very direct you know yeah i don't like the way you look oh wow well, i don't like the way you smell you to talk to strangers <laughs> really? I, don't, I don't like the way you smell lady oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah i was like okay well i'm not a fancy big fan of your dress either but okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well you know and that's uh, a point, pointing out the, the smell thing. Um, women, and I guess men too, I don't know, they walk around and they, they put this smelly crap on them, perfume or cologne or whatever, I, I'm and, and they walk around and that shit, that shit, it, it offends me. I, I don't like that smell coming at me from any direction. Well, and um, I, I wear perfume. Do you? Yeah, my husband gets it for me. Oh, well, how... Pleasant. Um, <laughs> I I just don't like it. I just don't like that that I don't know whatever it is chemical smell coming off of somebody. No, I do. I really like perfume. Okay. Well, not just all perfume, right? But really nice perfume. Yeah. All right. I I don't know what that is, no. but. No. <laughs> If if it's more expensive, it's nicer, I guess. I, I don't know. No, no. But I'm just saying, sometimes you smell something where you go, ooh, okay. Oh, Not uh, my preference, right? <laughs> no, no. No. Yeah. They, have this, they have this store here. Um, not here, but in San Diego. Uh, probably here. I don't know. Not, not in mm. this town, though. Uh, Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Yeah. You, ever, you heard of that? No. Okay, well, anyway. But it's like the best shit and lotions and perfumed stuff. Yeah, there. there's, 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 you know, you can go in there and get towels yeah. and, and other stuff. But they have this section that's all that smelly crap. And when I would walk within a couple aisles of that, I would start feeling nauseous. No, me different. too. There like, is holy a store hell. called Normal. Yeah. yeah. We have a store in Denmark called Normal that only sells, like, perfumed stuff. You can't be in there. People walk in there and it's huge and they shop for like half an hour and I spend two minutes and I'm always gagging going. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 put some put yeah. a vent, put some ventilation in here or something, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And the fun part is every time you in one of the, this is worth remembering, Grimnia, right? What? When you smell the smell of raspberry or vanilla like that, uh-huh. it mainly comes from a little glance in the butt of the beaver. Vanilla comes from an orchid. Yeah, but when you smell it in a perfume, they are usually using artificial vanilla and artificial raspberry, and that that comes from a, a little gland 
in the butt of the beaver. So, so if I walked up to you <laughs> and you had some perfume on, I'd probably a, a little bit of that is probably beaver ass. Yeah, yeah and I, I say you smell like a beaver's ass. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> would you would you be offended? <laughs> or 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 would you ask me? How do you know what a beaver's ass smells like? <laughs> I know I would say mm, vanilla. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I, it, it's interesting that uh, you put up the uh, several topics for me to. To, to, to okay. look at or consider, and I think we we we've at least covered the first two, even without uh, doing it. Something to lose, freedom, and group think is more than just voting. Because a lot of yeah. this is what we've been discussing is, is group think based. Yeah, well, it'd be like the people on your bus walking up to you and saying they don't look the way you like the way you look, or yeah. um, uh, whatever the, the various things we talked about. Yeah. So let's get to this third one. Sure. Why Which was why flashing your neighbors <laughs> is a bad thing, followed up by why flashing your neighbors is a good thing. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, that I can cover that pretty easy, though, right? Okay. Or it's uncover a good thing. it. Yeah. Okay. I would say it's a bad thing if you want to be friends with your neighbors. Well, I, it maybe it depends on your neighbors and, and and what you look like. Okay, let me just say this: if I was living in a neighborhood where that was a good thing, if you wanted to be friends, I would move. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> would you not? Well, Wouldn't I, that be kind of a deal breaker for am I staying or am I going? Well, I don't know. I mean, if there's a good-looking woman in the next house over, flashing me, I. I'd be okay with that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. she if she expected me to flash her back, then you know, then I'm, I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> necessarily move, but I might pull my drapes. Um. <laughs> no, I would I would definitely go with. Don't want to be that friendly with my neighbors. I would move. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We had a um, a fun court case in uh, Denmark a couple of years back. Okay. Um, yeah, a guy sued his neighbor for um, uh, mowing his lawn na naked, right? That sounds dangerous. Yeah. Well, he was always doing, the guy who got sued was always doing yard work naked. Okay. So he was out there mowing and doing yard work. And, and, and did, 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 did he go ask his neighbor to put something on? Well, the neighbor sued him for... Um, what do you call that? Embarrassment or right? Who was the, the naked neighbor sued the other guy? No, no, the neighbor to the naked guy sued the naked okay, guy. Okay, but 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 did the neighbor oh, that yeah. that that sued the naked guy? Did he go over and ask the guy, Probably. the naked guy, to put some clothes on before he went? Probably, to write? yeah, yeah, he did. And the guy said, "No, this is my garden. I want to do gardening naked, and this is my house and my garden." Okay. Yeah. So when he got when he sued the guy, the naked guy, right? Yeah. The naked guy did a counter suit for um um what do you call <laughs> trespassing? Okay. And uh and for luring on him and looking at him. So um yeah, indecent exposure. Did did, did, and, did the guy So have... the naked guy filed another lawsuit saying, "Well, you're you're looking at me. Why are you looking over my fence?" I yeah, mean, so, he, so he had fe he had fences. Yeah, that was an edge and everything. So so yeah, so it is the other guy's fault for yeah. for for being. So that's what the, that's what the judge said. He yeah, said, don't, well, don't look. Yeah, <laughs> don't quit, quit looking over the guy, guy's damn fence. <laughs> yeah, so don't fucking look. And and he he went with the harassment suit and said, "You're harassing this guy. It's his right to be naked in his garden, for fuck's sake." Yeah, <laughs> his garden. I would think so. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. That's good of that judge. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I still wouldn't live in a neighborhood where everybody was walking around naked, though. Is it, you're you're not a nudist by nature. No. But here's what then: how flashing your neighbors is good, right? 
Okay. Because if if I was like you, right, who didn't want to be friendly with my neighbors. Oh, right. Yeah. Then flashing them is a really good move. Okay. Well, they're not going to want to talk to you. <laughs> well, I, I guess it depends on the neighbor, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, then, you know, if the neighbor really want to talk to you afterwards, then, you you know, okay, never to get friendly with that dude. <laughs> 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 so it could be used as a great test to see what kind of neighbors do you have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, deep down, <laughs> who of them are going <laughs> to wink at you and who are going to avoid you, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So, but I can't think of any neighbors. I've, I've, I haven't seen them all, but the ones that I've seen, yeah, I don't really want any of them um, leering at me. <laughs> <laughs> but I can guarantee you, I, I would not be out there mowing the lawn naked because. You know, things fly out sometimes from the mower, <laughs> and and, yeah. and there's certain areas of your body you don't want impacted by you know a high a high velocity something flying out from under the the, the, the mower. And, well, okay. In all fairness, the guy, the naked guy who got sued first, right? Uh huh. He is a stunt man. <laughs> he he works as a stunt man. He's a famous stunt man. <laughs> okay. So I'm guessing he knows what he's doing, right? Yeah, well, still, but, you know, if something's flying out, out from under your mower at 100 miles an hour, and, and it's yeah. only like a couple feet away, there's not, not much chance of dodging that. No. My dad, you know, my dad did that. You know, Stunt we man. had a swimming pool, like, and we were one of the only in the neighborhood who had a swimming pool, right? Right. And all summer, we had friends coming over, and my dad, he worked a lot, but when he was home, uh, he insisted on this is his garden and his swimming pool, and he would swim around naked, right? Sure. And and sometimes you would have all your friends over, right? And then my dad came home, and I was like, oh god, no, <laughs> no. And so did everybody jump in naked? No, no. Did some most people? <laughs> did some people jump people. in naked? No, uh, most of the the te- they it was teenagers. <laughs> They were embarrassed and thought it was really awkward and left. Okay, so that you... They always left. Oh, your dad is here. <laughs> so, so your dad's swimming around naked with a bunch of teenagers. It's his pool. They can just move if they if they don't want to be around it, yeah? Okay. And I tried to... <laughs> you could tell him, you just, Dad, please. He was like, oh, I, I work 100 hours a week, and this is my pool, and I'm off, and this is my Saturday off, and I built this pool. This is, I'm going to swim in my pool <laughs> Okay, you don't like it, you can leave. <laughs> yeah, you can leave. You got the beach ten minutes from here. Yes, Dad. Well, all people, let's go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> or at least go back in the house. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, back then, nobody would think, oh, a pedophile or anything, because that's not what it was, right? Yeah, he it was, was just swimming. He wasn't, yeah. he, he, he wasn't, you know, whatever. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Love my dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, flashing neighbors. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm not gonna flash my neighbors, and I, I can't think of any neighbors I want to have flash me. No. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same here. Uh, but I but I have no problem with. I mean, if if I saw a neighbor walking up the street naked, walking his dog or something, or her dog, whatever, that's that's their thing. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't yeah. care. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna get excited about it one way or the other. Like I'm not gonna no. have a fit and go yell at him. It's or, not. It's it's uh it's not per se illegal to be naked in public in Denmark. Oh, it's not okay. No, it probably and, is and beaches. Here. We don't have nude beaches. All beaches, you can be nude at all beaches. That's great. You just have <laughs> the thing is, you have to show consideration to the people and the environment around you. Okay. Yeah. 
So we had a, and this leads to some funny uh, crashes, right? Because it's pretty normal for old folks in Denmark to to go swimming in the ocean naked. And they do it all year round. So they do it in winter and fall and whatever, right? All right. So, <laughs> so sometimes, you know, then you have these swimming clubs or unions, as we talked about last time. Right? They have, we have a lot of those where especially old folks, they meet up in groups. And they go swimming naked every day just, you know, because it's healthy to swim in the ocean every day, right? Yeah. And uh, maybe they did that for... um 20, 30 years at the same little beach for the same hour every day. And then all of a sudden, um, family with kids moves in and they start using the beach. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, you know, one hour a day, the beach is, you know, loaded with six or eight naked old people. <laughs> I, I don't, I personally, I, I don't understand why. People are protecting their kids from nakedness. It's like, no, no, I, no. I don't I, do it's that just, either. It's just natural. It's just bodies. The kids, yeah. you know, are there, and there's somebody naked. If, if they didn't make a big deal about it, it wouldn't be a big deal that that a kid no. saw somebody naked. No, it wasn't when I was a kid. But I, I think people are more um, hypersensitive today. I think so too. Yeah, it wasn't when I was a kid. Yeah, whatever. We just, just knew because I I live close to the beach, right? We just knew which of the old guys not to talk to. Because <laughs> <laughs> kids know, man, they know. No, oh, don't talk to that guy. He's a fucking perv. Yeah, okay. Right. Well, that's different. Once they start perving out, perving out, that's different. But just just being naked, I mean, whatever. Yeah. But we, I remember, like on the beach, we had hell. I'm naked where, right now. You would know oh. that the guy with the newspaper is wanking <laughs> off when he sits at the beach. Just don't go over to him, right? And yeah. Like, at, least, <laughs> at least, at least not till he's done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it would take like ten seconds, and every kid on the beach knew that guy is wanking off. <laughs> <laughs> Itchy balls, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. (laughs) All right, all right. Well, I think we've covered um, freedom, uh, nothing left to lose, something left to lose, um, something to lose. Um, Yeah. So I I, I think, uh, you know, we're we're definitely all got to have varying uh, views on, on the word freedom and the meaning of freedom and how we perceive freedom. Yeah. One final question, though, right? All right. Uh, would you agree that or disagree that a, a person who is free in his mind is more free than a person who isn't? Absolutely. No matter yeah, the yeah. physical uh, surroundings. Yeah, no question about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people that are trapped by thinking along the lines of societal norms, they have no freedom. No. Uh, they're, they're, they're stuck in in whatever other people like and other people agree to and other people want to see or not see. Uh, so they, they they cannot be free because uh, they 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 are trapped in in that mode where uh, you know if if the Jones or Smiths or whoever uh, uh, think this is a bad thing, then it's a bad thing. Which that's messed up. If you think it's a bad thing, then it's a bad thing. Uh, uh, you know, people know. People know the difference between right and wrong. They know what's bad and good. Um, they don't. They don't need to. You know, look at somebody else. And say, is this okay that I do this here? Are you hurting anybody? Mm-hmm. Are you hurting somebody's property? No. Go ahead. <laughs> I I actually think that um, emotions are a better indicator of good and wrong than thought are. Okay. I think if you are more, if, if you know, if you listen to, because emotions and thoughts are kind of the same, though, right? But they live different places in they, you. They are. They do. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I think if you are guided more by um, how you are making, and people are gifted with the ability to feel how we are making other people feel. All right. And I think if you let that guide you a little more than your rational idea of what is right and wrong, I think the world would be a better place. 
I agree. All right. Well, that's going to uh, wrap it up for us here today on It's All Connected. Uh, we'll be back again next week with another episode for y'all. Um, anything? Anything? No, thank you for a lovely hour, Grimnir, and thank you, people, for listening. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Check the schedule on com for all the rest of the shows. And have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Peace.